Hello and welcome you all to today's lesson of the engineering mathematics. Today we will talk about Lagrange's method of undetermined multipliers to get the stationary value of the function. In other words, we can also say this Lagrange's method of multiplier will be used to get the maxima or minima value of a function. Extrema values, these are also called extrema values. So let's see what is Lagrange's method of undetermined multipliers. Let f x comma y comma z be the function of three variables. These three variables are x, y and z and the variables are connected by a relation given by phi of x comma y comma z is equal to zero. Then this function will have stationary values and now uh, this is the method given that how we can get the stationary value. The initial condition to have a stationary value is always that the first partial derivative of the function with respect to each variable has to be zero. So this is the initial condition. Del f upon del x is equal to zero. Del f upon del y will have to be zero and del f upon del z will have to be equal to zero. Now using these three initial conditions, we can evaluate that del f upon del x dx plus del f upon del y dy plus del f upon del z dz is always equal to 0. So we have already cons considered this phi of x comma y comma z is equal to 0 as our first equation. Now let's consider this conclusion as our second condition. By performing a total differentiation on equation number 1. What is the equation number 1? This is phi of x comma y comma z is equal to 0. So by performing a total differentiation on this, uh, we'll get del phi upon del x dx plus del phi upon del y dy plus del phi upon del z dz is equal to 0. Now let's call this as equation number 3. Now we need to perform some uh, processing on these equations. Let's multiply the equation number 3 by lambda and add it to equation number 2. So this is the equation number 3. Now we need to multiply this with lambda. So this will be uh, lambda del phi upon del x dx and so on. And we'll add this with equation number 2, del f upon del x dx and so on. So let's see. On multiplying, we get del f upon del x dx from the equation number 2 plus lambda del phi upon del x dx from the equation number 3 where we have multiplied with lambda. So this is the term 1 and then this is the term y del phi upon del y dy plus lambda del f upon del y dy plus lambda del phi upon del y dy and this is the term 3 del, phi, del f upon del z dz plus lambda del phi upon del z dz. So this is achieved by multiplying equation number 3 with lambda and then adding it to equation number 2. So now we have got this. Uh, let's take this dx common from the first term and then dy common from the second term and dz common from the third term. So we have this equation. Now this equation as we know we have three terms and all the three terms are added together. This equation will hold good if all the three terms are equal to zero. So we can say that this equation, the equation this, it will hold good when we have del f upon del x plus lambda, del phi upon del x is equal to 0. We have del f upon del y plus lambda, del phi upon del y equal to 0. And we have del f upon del z plus lambda, del phi upon del z is equal to 0. So we have got these three equations. Let's call them equation number 4, equation number 5 and equation number 6. So now, on solving equation number 4, that is the relation given. So we can see this is equation number 1, this is the relation. And equation number 4, 5 and 6, we have just evaluated. So now on solving these equation number 1, equation number 4, equation number 5 and equation number 6, we can find the values of x, y, z and lambda for which the function has a stationary values. The only drawback with the Lagrange's method is that we cannot guess the behavior of the stationary values. That means uh, we cannot guess whether it's for minimum or it's for maximum. But uh, this is the Lagrange's multiplier method that can be used to get the stationary value of a function whenever the relation is given with 
within the variables. So let's see this with the help of an example. Uh, let's consider this example. Find the point upon the plane. The equation of the plane is given by ax plus by plus cz is equal to p at which the given function, the function is f is equal to x square plus y square plus z square. This is in three variable x, y and z has a minimum value and find this minimum value for the function f. Now we can see here, this is the function in three variable x, y and z and the relation between x, y and z is given by ax plus by plus cz is equal to p. So let's first take this relationship and now we can represent this relationship as the function phi. So this will be ax plus by plus cz minus of p. Let's call this equation number one. Now we need to get these four equations del f upon del x plus lambda del phi upon del x and so on. So let's evaluate these uh, three equations. Let me write the equation number one. This is del f upon del x plus lambda del phi upon del x. So del f upon del x we will get from this equation number of the equation f is equal to x square plus phi square plus z square. This will be 2x plus lambda del phi upon del x we will achieve from this equation number 1. This will be a only. So now this is equal to 0. So we have del f upon del x plus lambda del phi upon del x. Now the next is del f upon del y plus lambda del phi upon del y. This will be equal to 2y from the equation we can see. This is x square plus y square plus z square. So partial differentiation with respect to y will be 2y plus lambda. And now the partial differentiation of this equation number 1, this will give us b. So this is equal to 0. The third equation, del f upon del z plus lambda del phi upon del z. This will be equal to 2z plus lambda c is equal to 0. So we have these uh, three equations. Let's call this equation number 2, equation number 3, and this is equation number 4. Now from these three equations, equation number 2, 3, and 4, let's get the value of x, y, and z. So from equation number 2, we'll see this x is equal to minus of lambda a upon 2. And from this equation number 3, we'll have value of y is equal to minus of lambda b upon 2. And from equation number 4, we'll have the value of z. This is equal to minus of lambda c upon 2. So we have these three values, x, y, and z in terms of lambda. Now let's substitute these values into the relationship. So this is ax plus by plus cz is equal to p. So now let me write the relationship first. This is ax plus by plus cz is equal to p. We will replace this x, y, and z uh, with these values which are in terms of lambda. So this will be minus of lambda a square upon 2. Then we'll have minus of minus of lambda b square upon 2 and minus of lambda c square upon 2. This is equal to p. Now let's take lambda as common or and then this will be, let's take minus of lambda common right now. So this will be a square plus b square plus c square. And we can also take two common. So this will be p. Now from here, we can get the values of uh, lambda. So from this, lambda will be equal to minus of 2p divided by a square plus b square plus c square. So here we have uh, this value of lambda. Now we can replace this value of lambda into these three equations uh, to get this x, to achieve y, and to achieve this z. So we'll replace the value of lambda into these three. Let me write this x is equal to minus lambda a upon 2. And now I'll replace this lambda from here. So this will be x is equal to once we I replace this lambda. So this will be minus 2p upon a square plus b square plus c square multiplied by minus of a upon 2. So now we can see this a will be cancelled. 2 will be cancelled. So this will be a b upon a square plus b square plus c square. Similarly, if I write this y is equal to lambda 
b upon 2 and if i replace this lambda from the value above so this will give us b p upon a square plus b square plus c square and similarly we'll have z is equal to c p upon a square plus b square plus c square so these are the values of x y and z uh, these are the points where we have stationary value for the given function f is equal to x square plus y square plus z square now let's find out the uh, stationary value of the function at these given points so we'll just need to replace these values into the given function so now the given function f is equal to x square plus y square plus z square now we need to replace these values so what we have we have x is equal to a p upon a square plus b square plus c square we have y is equal to b p upon a square plus b square plus c square and we have z is equal to c p upon a square plus b square plus c square so let's replace this will be a square p square upon a square plus b square plus c square whole square plus this will be b square p square upon a square plus b square plus c square whole square plus this will be c square p square upon a square plus b square plus c square whole square this can be rewritten as p square upon a square plus b square plus c square whole square and then from here we have a square plus b square and plus c square so this will be p square upon a square plus b square plus c square so this is the uh, value of the function the stationary value of the given function so now we have seen with the help of the lagrange's method we evaluated the three stationary point x y and z and then with the help of these points we have find out the uh, value of the function the minimum value of the function that comes to be p square upon a square plus b square plus c square so that's it for the today's lecture we'll meet in the next lecture with some more examples using the lagrange's method of multiplier to get the stationary value of a given function. Thank you so much.